Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, Zach here once again for Friday Night Flies. Uh, we're here at the White River Fly Shop, Bass Pro in Tawasson. Um, I forgot my tripod today, so this is kind of interesting how this is all going to work. We'll, we'll figure it out. Hopefully it's all going okay. Um, so what we're going to do today is another sea run cutthroat pattern um, for off the beaches. Here, um, this pattern actually originated down in Washington uh, by Leland Miyawaki. If you've heard that name before, then you're very familiar with the Miyawaki popper. Um, this pattern is deadly, deadly for cutthroats and, uh, and coho off the beaches. So definitely one to add to your arsenal. Um, there is one video of this uh, fly on YouTube. Needless to say, it's pretty bad. Um, but it is more just him tying it, um, not so much a tutorial. So we're finally going to break it down for you and uh, give it to you how it should be in high definition um, instead of with a cell phone. Um, but yeah, so it's a pretty simple pattern. Uh, it goes together pretty easy. It's a fun one to tie. Um, this fly has insane action. So it actually has a popper head tied in reverse. Instead of it actually popping like a normal popper, as you strip this thing through the water, it actually causes it to dart side to side. Um, so the action on this fly is just nuts. Um, I fished it a little bit last summer um, after I went to Seattle. I picked one up, and it's uh, it's worthy of having one in your box if you're fishing off the beaches for sure. Um, so we're going to do the cutthroat version. Um, the only difference with the, um, the coho version is it's the next size head up, and you're using a size uh, 2 hook instead of a size 4 or size 6. Um, other than that, it's all pretty much the same thing. Um, I've been playing around with the colors a little bit too. We're going to do the original, the olive and white. Um, I'm going to do up some in uh, some Mickey Finn colors, some red and yellows too. Uh, we've got all the stuff here in store to do it, so it's uh, definitely pop on in and we can uh, walk you through it and uh, get you set up with everything that you need. Um, yes, yeah, so let's just head on down and get going. All right, so no tripod. I hope this holds and works okay. So this is it, the Milwaukee popper. Um, so I'll give you a slow roll there, because it's just going to pop out. There's a lot of stuff going on, on the bottom, not so much going on, on the top. And you notice that popper head tied in backwards. Um, so this is what gives it that darting action from side to side, which is pretty awesome. But it's a pretty wicked fly. Um, like I said, I fished it last summer, and it was a blast to fish. Um, super active, cast a strip. Uh, a lot of fun to try and track down sea run cutties with this thing. So, let's get going. <coughs> Excuse me. So the base hook, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what it is. We're gonna be chopping most of it off anyway. So not a big deal. Let me just make sure you can see all that. Perfect. So it doesn't matter. Anything cheap with a straight eye. Um, these I found here, they're uh, like a buck something for like 10 hooks. So kind of why I went with it. You can use uh, stainless hooks if you want as well. But again, doesn't matter. Thread, once again, doesn't matter. Um, I just had 210 whites on the bobbin, so that's what we're using. Now I'm not covering the entire hook shank, because like I said, we are going to be cutting most of it off. So I'm just going to grab a popper head out of the package here. Basically the way I judge how much thread I put on is by how big the head is. So I'm going to go a little less than what that is, so about there. And now we're going to attach our stinger hook. So all I've done is I've fed the butt ends through the eye and looped it over and pulled it nice and snug. So for the mono, just some 20 pound Maxima. This stuff is awesome. It should be in your box anyway, um, especially for leaders for salmon, steelhead, it's the way to go. For a hook, I'm using an OPST swing hook, size four. These are wicked hooks. They come barbless. You can't really go wrong. Um, in the original, he likes to use gamagatsus. He explains the name of how gamagatsu came to be. Because when you stab yourself, you yell out, ah, uh, gamagatsu. I wasn't going to do the joke, but I did it anyway. So there we go. So all we're going to do is we're going to place our stinger hook on top here. I'm going to do a couple wraps here just to kind of get this mono situated how I want. The length is all up to you. For me, I like to have the eye just shy of the bend there. I find that gives me a pretty good length of a fly. And this one's going to be for, for the cutties. So like I said, I'm using a size 4 hook. You can use a size 6 as well. Um, for the coho, you may want to beef it up to a size 2. But with these OPST swing hooks, they are pretty strong. I think a size uh, 4 will hold them. So now I'm just going to double back. 
that mono like so and wrap down on it and we're gonna trim away those butt ends so there's our main chassis for this fly you can add some super glue if you want by doubling it over they're not gonna pull out so we're gonna add some tail feathers on this one so just a grizzly saddle or cape or whatever you got just find two that kind of kind of match up in shape and should have probably done this ahead of time we're just gonna roll with it let's grab two that are similar there's one there's two there we go I like those two there so the nice sides I'm gonna have facing out so I'm gonna put the dull side to dull side like so. This is just like as if you're tying in a deceiver or anything like that, with feather tails. So the length, I'm going to have it extend just past the hook there. So I'm just going to create a little tying point here. Just double check that's how far I want it. It's good to me. When I tie these in, I'm going to put one on one side of the hook, one on the other. If you've been practicing your pinching loops, we're going to do that again. So I pinch everything together, a loose wrap, and I pull straight down couple wraps just to secure that in. That looks pretty good to me. Might take you a little while to figure that one out. Just practice, practice, practice. I'm going to come in here with my scissors, trim away a good chunk of the fluff. I'm sure that just killed Dana a little bit using a perfectly good grizzly saddle. <laughs> there we go, just wrap back on it a smidge. Now that's looking pretty good. So now we're going to add in some flash. So the first flash material, just some holographic flashaboo in silver, number 6991, just to give you an idea. I'm going to take two strands, you can add more if you want, I'm going to stay pretty true to the original recipe on this one. Two strands, I'm going to tie two on my side, but near the bottom of the hook shank. So I'm just going to get that. Roughly secured, get them lined up how I want them. Like so. I'm going to double it over. Two on your side, again, near the bottom of the hook shank. Now I'm going to come in and trim these a little longer than the hackle tips. <clears throat> now, the second flash we're going to use is some crystal flash. It's in rainbow, so it's a bunch of different colors combined. Original recipe called for two strands. I'm going to add three. Just I like things in odd numbers sometimes. I'm just going to select three there. Trim those out. And it's kind of a cool material. It changes color through the strand, which is kind of neat. These I'm going to tie a little bit higher on the hook shank. So three on my side. I'll pull that over. Three on your side. I'm tied in a little bit higher up. Just secure that all the way back. Now I'm just going to taper cut those just so everything's not so even. Just make sure I got them all. Looks good to me. So there's our tail section. Now for what I would call the wing. So I'm using three materials. The two main materials is Icelandic sheep. So this stuff's from Superfly. It's an awesome material if you haven't used it. Um, great substitute for polar bear, which you can also use in this fly but it's super, super wispy. Great for saltwater streamers. Basically, the trick with this stuff, you want to use more than you think because when this stuff gets wet, it really slicks down into just about nothing. So I'm going to take a fair size clump here. That's a good chunk. What I'm going to do, I'm going to try to roughly find the midpoint. It's a little long. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut off about three quarters of an inch, half an inch off the back. Save this material because it makes a wicked dubbing. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come in here with my fingers, pull out the rest of the under fur. And up at the tail end, there's going to be some really wispy stuff. I'm just going to pluck those out. So as you can see, we've got a nice tapered end and straight end. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to even that out. So I'm just going to gently pull on it. I'm going to taper this material. So 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to double this over on itself. And we take some of that under furrow. So you want to have a nice little taper. There we go, we've got tapers at both ends. More under fur coming out. That's fine. So I'm going to tie this in so it extends just past the flash. So each section gets progressively longer. Do a few wraps secured on top. I'm not going to wrap it right to the eye because I'm going to pull this over. I want room for that popper head to sit in as well. I'm just going to pull that over. We're going to secure that down. Lock it down with some nice wraps. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take all that fur and I'm just going to roll up my fingers a little bit. As you can see, that kind of joins it all together. I'm going to split it on the hook shank, the stinger hook. Kind of like so. Cool. Of course, move that one pesky half. Of it. There we go. So everything's kind of sitting how I like. It's looking all right so far. Now my second wing is going to be same thing, Icelandic sheep, but an olive. So we've got this in a few colors here at the shop. Like I said, I'm going to do some in some Mickey Finn colors, so some yellow and red as well. We got the yellow popper heads to go with it. So again, I'm going to take. Take another generous clump, but a little less than what the white was. Same idea. Cut it nice and close. You can use craft fur as well. There's lots of substitutes that you can use for this fly. Of course, craft fur comes in like a billion different colors. And again, I'm going to trim off three quarters of an inch or so. Clean out all that under fur. Again, save all that. Use it for dubbing. Come in at the top here. Take away some of these really wispy fibers. Right, again, I'm just going to taper this slightly. Kind of like so. Now this is going to go in right on top of the white there. So tie it in right on top. Again, I'm going to get this to cooperate here. Thread doesn't want to sit where it is. Nope. Really give it some nice snug wraps here. This thread does kind of want to slip a little bit. Again, just roll out your fingers, kind of join everything together. How's that looking? That's looking all right. <clears throat> if you want, you can pull everything off that hook shank. A nice little twist. Really work this material on your fingers. It's looking all right. So again, this stuff really shrinks down once you start fishing it. Like I said, use a little more than you think you need. I'll stop playing with that. That's going to bug me. And now to top it all off, just a couple strands of peacock curl. We've got four strands here. I'm just going to kind of roughly taper them. And these are going to sit right on top. No need to go crazy. So if you ever see salmon fry, they always have a darker back, or any kind of bait fish for that matter. They always have a darker back on them, and they're progressively lighter as they go to the bottom. Just helps them camouflage a little bit into the water. So now that that thread's slipping on me, let's lock it all down. Let's do a whip finish. We're gonna do the whip finish up top here. One, maybe two. We're gonna coat this thing in super glue anyway, so one would probably be enough. <clears throat> I think I just bumped my focus there. Just double check here. All right, good enough. Looks good. So now the fun part: putting on the popper head. So I'm using a Rainey's Pee Wee Pops. So there's a mini pop is the next size up, I believe. They come in a couple different sizes. Um, so you'd be using the small for the coho. And there's a trick to getting this on right. So since we've got a big bump here, we're actually going to take our scissors and in the back, there's a hole that goes all the way through these and out through the front, if you can see it there. So I'm going to take my scissors in the back, I'm going to poke it through the hole that's already there. You want to be careful here because you don't want to stab yourself. 
just get your scissors going out the point of that popper head. And all I'm going to do is just twist it a little bit. This helps to hollow out that head a little bit more. Just makes it easier to, to put it on the hook shank. As we go here, slowly carve that out. It also kind of roughs it up a little bit so the, the glue will actually hold a little bit better. So as you can see, we've hollowed that sucker out. So now we're going to use everybody's favorite super glue, Zappa Gap. We're going to really give us a pretty good soak here. Kind of like so. Looks like I got a little bit extra there. Take some scrap hackles here. Brush that off just a little bit. And now I'm going to take this popper head and the long side, so it kind of angles, the long side is going to go on the bottom. So this I'm just going to squeeze on here. I'm going to pop it over that hook eye. Like so. And we're just going to squeeze that puppy to shape. Trust me, once this guy dries from that super glue, that head isn't going anywhere. Just kind of make sure that it's sitting with that long point right at the bottom, just like so. There you go, give you a little bit of slow roll. It looks a little unruly. Once you start fishing this, all the materials blend together. It is a pretty sweet fly. And a really fun one to fish at that. If you've never fished poppers before, this one definitely is a good one to start out with. That's kind of bugging me there. There's a little slow roll for you. You can see, I will part, part that hair and uh, set that hook right in the middle. So now, since we're only allowed single barbless, or not single barbless, I should say, is the ocean. You are allowed multiple hooks, but I'm going to cut this guy down. So the reason why you find the cheapest hooks you can is you're literally cutting that right at the end of the popper head. Pop that sucker off. Here, I'm going to place that hook and that fur right through. Just like so. And there you have it. The Miyawaki popper. There's the other side there. Super fun pattern to tie. Even more so to fish. Because it's super active fishing um, when you're fishing these guys. All right, let's head on up and sign out. All right, everybody, there you have it, the Miyawaki popper. Like I said, super fun fly to fish and to tie. Um, this thing, the action on it is nuts. If you've never fished one, highly recommend it, especially for the Sea Run Cuddies, because they love hitting stuff on the surface. Um, there's guys down in the Puget Sound area that exclusively fish these. It's the only pattern they fish. Um, what's better than fish feeding on the surface, right? Nothing. Um, so yeah, like I said, crazy action on it. Strip it fast. It's a good, great searching pattern, especially for sea run cutties, because um, they're either there or they're not, and they're always moving. So it's a good one to start out with and just chuck and just start stripping, creating a lot of disturbance. That could even bring them in, um, all that noise and stuff like that that's going on in the surface. So that's the original, the olive and white. Like I said, I've been playing around with a couple other variations too. I'm gonna do a couple Mickey Finn versions, and uh, I've got some shrimp pink and white ones as well. Um, yeah, we're getting closer, closer to that time when the sea run cuts come around, and they're a lot of fun to fish for. Um, if you haven't given it a go before, definitely give it a go now. Um, next couple weeks here, as soon as it starts to warm up, the fry will start hatching, and then it's game on. Um, but yeah, so that's that for this week. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, probably got some more sea run cutthroat patterns coming your way next week. Uh, we'll kind of go from there. So hope you enjoyed. Hit us up on Facebook, send your questions comments uh, follow us on instagram subscribe to our youtube channel the whole nine yards you know what's going on now yeah if you got any questions shoot us an email at pros at fridaynightflies.com or uh give us a message on facebook or instagram or down in the comments on this video all right thank you very much we'll see you next week friday night flies would like to thank the following sponsors superfly solarez chinook wind outfitters dr slick griffin stonefoe